Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Charmed Life Broadcasting live from Universal Broadcasting Network Studios in Hollywood, California. I'm your host, Trisha Carr. Thank you so much for being here today. And if you're watching on YouTube, listening on podcast, or watching us live on Facebook or at UBNRadio.com channel one, your timing is perfect. We have a great show for you today and a little bit about, about myself in case it is your first time watching Charmed Life. I am Trisha Carr. I'm a medium. I am um, an animal communicator, and I'm an energy healer. I'm also an empath. I talk about that a lot. It's a really important part of what I do. And um, I, uh, you can find me. Uh, my website is Trisha Carr Charm, T-R-I-C-I-A, C-A-R-R Charm. Uh, dot com or um, my social media handles are at Trisha Carr Charm. So I'm really excited to be with you all today. And um, if you do watch this on YouTube or podcast or anything like that, please do subscribe. Please do share if you enjoy this content. That will mean the world to me. And I believe that it's sharing the message of unity consciousness and unconditional love. And of course, magic is really important to me. And we are taking calls today to do um, free readings or to um, give some spiritual advice, answer any questions. And I'm very excited, everyone who uh, is thinking about calling in, this is a really great show to call in because I have a dynamic, beautiful, exciting guest today. She is a medium and a spiritual educator, and her name is Josie Grouse. Hi, Josie. Hi, Trisha. <laughs> okay. You guys can hear me, I hope. <laughs> yes, I'm right yes. here. We okay, hear wonderful. Such a pleasure. Such a <laughs> such a pleasure to speak to you. Oh my goodness. It's great to be here. The pleasure is all mine. Josie's in Canada. I'm so sorry, I forgot which part of Canada you're in. I'm Toronto. Toronto, yeah. oh, yes. Okay. Snow snow covered <laughs> snow covered oh, part of Canada. That's it's beautiful. Toronto. That's how Christmas should be. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful. It's really wonderful. You should see this magical glow and, you know, the sparkles all over the place and the white blanket covering the city. It's oh, oh, magical. Lovely. Probably have a bunch of snow fairies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Well, Josie sure. is very prolific. I highly recommend subscribing to her channel. She has tons of amazing advice exciting topics i'm serious like the advice that she gives and um her, the it's she's spiritual educator is definitely appropriate she's um right on the money with um spiritual laws and just the way that um unconditional love the way that god works with us god is in the universe and um so please do subscribe to josie's channel and follow her on facebook but Josie, I would love for you to give us a little bit about your background or your work or your journey. What? What's tell tell my audience about Josie? Oh, oh <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, you know, my story is. Uh, I mean, I wish I could tell you some super exciting events. And when I was a little girl and I saw spirits, none of that nature has ever happened. But I was always a spiritual person. And I used to go to church, I used to, you know, pray to angels, I had my own kind of a connection with the divine. Um, and uh, so again, later in my life, and I was in my 20s, my dad passed away, and he passed away under uh, some tragic circumstances. Mm -hmm. He was a pedestrian struck by a car, and then he died. And at that time, I was working in an emergency room. And for me, because of because of his death, my desire was really to save lives and to, um, and I became an emergency room nurse you know, seeing people dying and my dad passed away and I was really healing myself from grief and everything I knew about God, about angels, about, you know, the spiritual world didn't really explain to me the nature of death and dying. It just, it didn't, didn't click to me. And I, I just felt like I needed to know, I needed to understand. It was my personal journey because my family at the time was a mess. Um, and I, I know everyone just sort of needed healing and take in their own time. But someone once mentioned to me, you know, why don't you go see a medium? Because, you know, mediums can speak to the dead people. Mm -hmm. And I was at that, and I was in a pretty bad shape emotionally at the time. And uh, 
Um, so anyways, I went on to see this woman in Toronto, and we, we're actually good friends even up till today, but she was that first experience that I've ever had with anything to do with the afterlife. Um, and and she was a, she's a beautiful medium. She she can channel spirits very well, and she's doing this work with from the heart. And then it, something happened to me during that first experience. It was almost... I had a, a glimpse of reality. It was almost like I had the shift in consciousness. It was such a, such a, mo- it's a moment, you know, it, I can never even explain to you exactly what happened. It was almost like the door just was open to, for me in a spirit world. From that point on, I, I could hear energies. I could hear voices and I thought I was just going crazy you know <laughs> yes. I thought I was just losing it and I was just um and I I felt like I needed to know even more because I wanted to find out especially working in the merch now for me starting to see the dead people and and just feeling things and watching lights go on and off in places and uh, just so many weird things have started happening in my life so it wasn't something that I could just ignore um and then I, I decided to kind of learn more and I went on to study with mediums and then I was interested in healing and I got into card readings, just intuition in general. I felt like cards were really, if I master reading, uh, say, cards and oracle cards, tarot, yeah. I would be just a better intuitive. It was something I, I, I just, it was a guidance step by step taking me from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place to the next place and then at some point i think in the uh, about 2000 and dad passed away in 2003 and about 2009 it was the time when i could really do this work for others because i could now connect to spirits on the other side um and people started to seek me out people started to sort of come and ask me for readings and uh, i would have the whole family my very first sort of client who came to me and she actually wanted me to, um, to me specifically to this work. She's, uh, she's a woman who lost her son. And that was the, the, the sort of, I had a vision from this point on that this work will be done through me and only through me. And that the way that I will be doing this mediumship um, specifically work will be just to help people heal from grief and that gave me that strength and then desire to continue and to move on and take this as like part of my life destiny something that I was created and was put on earth to do and um, and now I can look back and let me tell you like death was something that was part of kind of my job my work experience and so on when I was a nursing student just entering the nursing school my very first client my very first patient died (laughs) during my ship and then all of the you know my student fellows they they were just had to you know feed the little ladies take them Mm -hmm. for a walk and I had to wrap the body which is you know now looking back I'm realizing that the universe was always kind of leading me into this direction and uh because I needed to be knocked out of my fear of death. Yes. And, and that's eventually what, what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, was, I had no fear of death, and it, le- it helped me to just really to take that step forward and then uh, become a medium, which is what I'm here uh, to do, and I'm enjoying it. This is where I see a lot of fulfillment for my soul and uh, for people whom I serve. Well, Josie, you know what? While you were telling your story... I uh, looked. I looked down, and the clock in front of me said, "When it said eleven, eleven, you were at that moment saying, and basically, this is what I'm put on Earth to do." So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wonderful! Well, <laughs> thank you. That's that's just a confirmation. Another for confirmation, me. yeah. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I think for you too as well, Trisha. Yeah, you know, because you. we are all we are all here for the same reason, mm-hmm. and uh, none of us are here randomly. We have known each other for many lifetimes, and in this lifetime, we're just remembering things and uh, yes. getting a lot of clarity along the way, Absolutely. and just taking the next step. Right. Um, I, you know, I heard um, a person named uh, Natalie Janelli. She actually channels 
um, a person named Dr. Peebles, and she's going to be on the show in January. But Natalie, one time when I was in one of her classes or sessions, she said that, you know, since we have infinite intelligence in us because we're inseparable from infinite intelligence or the universe, that if someone asks you a question, instead of saying, I don't know, you can always say, hold on, I do know. <laughs> you can just <laughs> wait. <laughs> or maybe you just need to remember. <laughs> so I thought yes, that was pretty fun. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's actually you know, I. Yeah, I, I do feel that we all we all hear and, you know, not well, this is, has been my experience and my guidance that there are people who are destined to remember. There are people who are destined to do the spiritual work and there are people who will never. It's not their journey not this to time, remember that spiritual world. Yeah. And that's OK. Yeah. But for those of the people out there who are on the same page, who are awakening to their gifts, these are the people with whom we can share this energy and that yeah. connection. And everyone else is on their own. <laughs> everyone <laughs> else is kind of doing their own karmic work. Uh, and it just gets their journey. They don't have to remember yeah. their spirit. Sure. And I know, I know that. So actually, that is something that I would love for us to discuss for you to elaborate upon because there are some people who say you know you are, are born a medium or you're not born a medium and some think that it's a developed skill only or and certainly I mean I think personally I'm sure maybe there I'm somewhere in between I think it's a talent you know just mm -hmm. like um, you know I studied voice for a long time and at some point I was like I'm not as good as I you know I'm not as good as Whitney Houston so <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much I develop it, I'm not going to be Whitney Houston. But I certainly did get really good for me, for my talents. That's my outlook. And I, I know that you have a perspective, like you've already started to touch upon, about developing mediumistic abilities. So mm -hmm. tell us about your perspective on that. You know, with any kind of talent, talent on itself is just sort of, uh, a raw material is just what you build with this is how you develop this is what you make out of it so having a talent on its own it's just it's sort of the good foundation to help you to direct you in a certain way but i i see well we all psychics by nature we all six sensorial right. uh bodies we all have our intuition as our sixth sense so this is that's just a nat nature without the actual intuition we cannot even survive yes. intuition is really what helps us to connect us with that gut feeling and see beyond uh you know it's just that feeling it's more how we perceive the world but as, as you know, some people are born talented actors, and that's a natural thing for them. They become, you know, Meryl Streep and then anyone else. There's people, beautiful vocal artists as well, you know, Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we still have that voice. Like, we still have the vote. We all have vocal abilities. We can right. talk. We can speak. We can communicate. We can sing, you know, to the best of our abilities. You know, who says we can't sing? Um, well, we don't have to become Whitney Houston. So we don't have to become Meryl Streep. So, you know, we just have to be who we're here on earth to do. But having an intuition, just taking that voice, even if you are not a talented vocal artist, you can still work with your talent. You can every day doing an exercise, this, you know, vocal activities and singing more and more. Eventually, you will become a good singer. So you still have the potential of really taking this gift or even your ability, your natural ability and take this to the next level. So, but it's also, it's work. It's yes, not it something that just appears out of the blue. It's natural thing. So for many people who are naturally just kind of super acute, super empathic, super sensitive to energies around them. Um, and I've met a few of these kinds of people. I don't think it's a gift. I think it's more of a curse <laughs> because <laughs> unless they understand yes. what to do with this, they pick up on energies and many of them, you know, like as I said, from my work in the hospital, seeing mm -hmm. people with mental illness such as schizophrenia, schizophrenia and then all of the uh, just mental illness of that nature, um, th that's that goes back to being too hypersensitive too yes. acutely aware of the energies around that they just they don't know what to do with these gifts and sometimes that's 
become that turns into this a psychiatric thing. Yes. So, I mean, I it's it just it's good to sometimes to have not enough of this, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So that your gift is sort of naturally um, that your sensitivity is healthy so that you are not bothered by the overload of information that is all over you you know like spirits are around us all the time (laughs) the reason we don't see them is because our senses are just not in tune but if you just all of a sudden become overwhelmed and hearing voices and seeing things and you don't even know what's happening that's when uh from from our kind of human point of view that's where you know the disease the mental health starts to uh be affected and so one yes, so I, I feel like it's good we have the raw you know gifts and then we build upon them we take this and we we're serious about it we take time we we really get to know ourselves yes. you know how do i see the world what energy is good for me what energy is just not good for me how can i be a better um communicator with the other side say so with angels how can i be more good with uh, you know more kind of attuned with Hell with bright with light energy versus mm-hmm. anything else that is out there. So, but we could develop these gifts. I can. Yes, matter. I agree. And like you said, you know, you you weren't you aren't one of the stories that a lot of other mediums where they're like, I saw spirits when I was a kid, and you know, all these things happened. You opened up to it suddenly as an adult. Yeah. And my story is yeah. somewhere in between. I did see things and I communicate with animals was a primary thing and I I actually knew my spirit guides when I was a kid of course I they called them my family called them my imaginary friends right. <laughs> but they're actually still with me but um I did you know put it away or at least not under not do it consciously for uh, most of my life after childhood and then had similar to you you know because of um, a sort of cri- personal crisis or mine wasn't as dramatic as yours as losing someone it was more just about my feelings you know being that hypersensitive person and not understanding why I actually had feelings that were contrary to the facts of my life that's what was really confusing I was like my life is great and I wake up with these feelings that and I literally called a psychic which I'd never done just like you were saying Mm -hmm. Laura Powers who was on my show um, a few uh, weeks ago and she is still my friend to, to this day, just like you said about that yep. <laughs> medium that opened, the, the session opened you up. And um, I, I booked, a, you know, 15 minutes with Laura and I just cracked open just like, just like you're saying, you know, it's, uh, and actually mm-hmm. that story happens a lot. I, I hear from other people that are, you know, working as mediums or, but you know, mm-hmm. a lot, uh, besides doing it professionally, um, I think that, um, there are plenty of people that benefit from connecting with their um, extrasensory gifts, psychic gifts, mediumship, and um, you know that they they don't have to have to they don't have to want to do it professionally, and that they can benefit from it. How do you feel about that? How do you think that people in um, in regular um, non spiritual based work, how can they benefit from being more open to their own psychic gifts? Well. You know, I'm just kind of curious how you got to to work with animals and, oh, okay. and you know, pets, sure. pet yeah. spirits and stuff like this. This is what I'd like to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, we can, I can well, talk about it. Well, it was first. never my experience. So, but I, I'm just curious. I'm just curious to, sure. to learn about that. Um, when it comes to like the gifts from the other side, we are all channels. Mm-hmm. We are all spiritual beings. And it's important. What I just basically help people to understand that we are just spirits having a body experience that the body is like a spacesuit yes. that allows you actually to live on earth is just if you would go on the moon and you cannot survive in the atmosphere you need spacesuit so that's what this body suit is mm-hmm. so we don't we, we have to keep that in mind because a lot of the times so that we think that we are the body and yes. we're walking around the earth identifying with everything physical when we just shift that focus and we understand we actually spiritual beings that we are the eternal souls that um we we just go in and out of bodies we go through lifetimes we never die we just go from one kind of edge to the other birth and death is just the two doors on this life journey Mm -hmm. so when i i just tell people to remember that so when they really understand this that every day is a gift and um that's where a lot of spiritual 
gift sort of in them become available. That's when they start to see value in actually investing in their spiritual growth and yes. learning more about their soul nature. And I always say, you know what, it just this this morning, you know, I lost my uh, sister this year. So it was she was 35 so years sorry. old. And let me tell you, it was I mean, she wasn't well for a while. But for the last year, we had this really deep soul conversations with her and she would often ask you know well what do you think you know when will I die you know will I die like how will I get better and so on and I would always tell her you know what God will prepare that time for you so you don't have to worry about it you don't have to just live your life right now in this moment enjoy it and she would feel a little bit better and then she would you know just go for a walk and it should feel better. And I, I never thought that something like this would actually happen and that she would actually pass. I, I, I just thought that she will just, she'll get better and, you know, just kind of on and off. But, um, and then in April, she got to the point where, um, she, she couldn't be, uh, she couldn't recover anymore. And, mm-hmm. One day she went to merge. She didn't feel well. She was taken by the ambulance, and then the news that she got that she she died. And then you know that that um, moment in time really helped me myself. You know I've done mediumship work for years now, and let me tell you, I know that there are spirits on the other side, and they're fine, and that's where we all will end up being. But on the, we we never really get over this as human beings. It's, that's just part of the life experience. And then when she passed, now my whole message about life has changed. So when I'm the work that I do is just to really help people to understand that this journey is not permanent. That is just, you don't know how much more time you have on this planet, in this body. And then but just use this time wisely. Just mm-hmm. look at your life from a perspective of, I will just do things that will serve me, that will help me, that will be um, of service to myself and to other people. You're not going to waste a second of your lifetime anymore. So, and that's where I'm coming from, really just to helping people get that. Because 95% of the world's problem and suffering will be eliminated when we just understand how life is, like the nature of life. And then we understand the yes. spirit is your true self. Now, when it comes to, like, first, I think that's on itself is a big deal. It's yes. a big deal to understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Secondly, when you are aligned with the spirit world, you become inspired. You get the reason for living. This yes, You get absolutely. ideas and creative ideas. That's where all of the information comes from. That's all of the inventions. That's all of the book titles come from. That's mm-hmm. where all of the uh, great plays come from. That's where Shakespeare's greatest ideas come from. That is where your best, you know, feeling some joy and in two men. This is the source of everything and all the joy. So you don't have to be a psychic. You don't have to be a medium. And it's quite frankly, I would just actually advise people against that because you have to have enough reason to do this work yes, because right. it's if you don't have enough reason to do this work, you will lose yourself in figuring this out and just and um, so I do like when you become a channel, when you become a medium, it's just that it's just you have naturally tuned into that, you know, ultimate potential, the, the source of everything, the source of all creativity and joy. And that's what it's about, really. It's not to helping people become psychics and just really, you know, just getting there into that potential and then the spirit world where they come from. And I love that you're, I like your message. You're like, don't do it yeah. <laughs> or don't, don't do it lightly at least, but you can, yes. you can have all yeah. the feeling of connecting to divine by singing a song with all your heart. Uh, and and mm-hmm. I mean that as a person who is doing this, you know, um, and mm-hmm. I have, it's the same, like you're saying that the creative source, that's yep. the whole point, the being connected Absolutely. to joy. Yeah. You know, we do have a call and I do, I will answer, I'll talk about, um, 
Mm-hmm. The uh, animal uh, communication stuff, I'm going to write it down for myself. But sure. uh, since we have a call right now, would you mind if we take a, uh, this call and if we, Absolutely. And we can, inter, we can Absolutely. intersperse some more chatting in between? Okay, great. Hello, let's do you're, it. you're live on the air. Who is this? Well, hello. This is Walt, and uh, you guys have a great show. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Walt. So nice to meet you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Los Angeles. <gasps> Wonderful. I'm in Los Angeles. Well, um, cool. Uh, tell us uh, what the metropolis that is. The metropolis that it is. <laughs> it is yes. Um, I traveled from my home in Burbank to Hollywood, and it only takes me. It's only four miles, and it takes me fifteen minutes. So you know. <laughs> um, but and no, and no shoveling of snow. It's all good. That's right. Uh, well, we don't have the snow fairies then either. Um, <laughs> well, Josie. <laughs> Josie, I will let you do the honors if you would like to start um, and um, connect with Walt and see what Mm -hmm. uh, he's calling in for today. Absolutely. Walt, pleasure to speak to you, my friend. Hello. Yes. So what can I do for you today? Now, do you have a question? Is there a certain spirit that you're looking for to connect? What can I, how can I help you? Well, I was just wondering if, if anything come you know that that uh, comes to you that might relate to me. I I will leave it open to you. I don't, I'm you know I, um, I'm open for suggestions. You know I mean uh, career, love, you know the normal stuff. The normal stuff. I love you know the normal stuff. <laughs> well, uh, just to kind of help you to understand the work that I do is I'm not a fortune teller. I am not sort of in a business of predicting the future. I'm a spiritual advisor. And then the spirits on the other side who are working with me. And if you have watched videos that I do on YouTube, um, they are teachers and they are channelers as well. So they're the ones who are actually helping me to put the information together. Most of the time when I'm doing readings, I'm actually connecting to your spirit sources on the other side. So that could be your departed loved ones, or that could be your spirit guides, anyone with whom I can sort of create that well, connection. The, the, one that, the one that seems to be more prevalent is my father who passed six years ago. Mm. Okay. Um, so I will use not just the departed people. I use the various sources of information. So when I am doing the, this work, I'm not just one person. I'm a team. <laughs> I love to, I always kind okay. of uh, love to say that as well. So, um, it's with your dad who passed away, I don't know if I will be able to connect. I'll do my best. Sometimes they come, sometimes they're not. I mean, it's just something that I have to respect a little together. So, mm-hmm. Let me see what they say to you. Okay. Um, well, I can start right now because this is the way it happens to me as I'm a channel. So 2016 to me looks like it was a big year for you. So it's an important year of your life. This is a transitional year. Most of your change has come on the career level. Sorry. Uh I'm not going to go into personal life because I feel there's a lot of information that's coming through that relates to your work. Okay. So your work is okay. probably uh, the area in your life where you should be putting a lot of emphasis on right now, as you are, uh, especially in the 2017, good year for work. Now, this uh, 16 was year of you, is the year of internal growth and just putting a lot of things into perspective. I also feel like you're packing your bags and if you're actually moving, if you moving out of this place where you are right now. Either you moved in the April of this year or you will be moving in the April of the following year, 2017. But it's actually the physical move that will be happening for you. So it's desirable if you actually decide to change the location. So if it relates to your work, so don't be afraid to change. Just specifically the location. Um, And um, uh, there is... Who is whose name is a, uh, like Rose? Starts with an R. Living or dead? It's like Rose. I don't. Goodness gracious! I don't know. If it doesn't ring any bells off the top of my head. Okay, starts with an R. Let me just Rose. put it this way. R R R. 
There's a think of your real. I mean, I'm trying to connect to the departed people, and your dad is not showing okay, up. Yeah. But there's other spirits who are here, okay. and right. I'm actually yeah. seeing the flower rose. Oh, oh, we know what. Oh, there was, ah, there was one Rebecca. Okay, and she are. Uh, yeah, Lenore. There's a lady. She's she's gone as well. Okay. She was she was a. She she worked with my mom taking care of the house um, when I was a kid. Okay, I'm so sorry to interject, but um, and so you were close with Rebecca because I your mother is still living, Walt. Yeah. Yes, my yes. mother's still alive. Okay, well, when um, you... she was around the house a lot, and I was a kid. You okay. know, that's, um, I mm-hmm. I do okay. Well, I do have because the first a... thing I saw was a maternal. Uh, guide. I didn't think it was actually your mother, but it's because maybe you you did. I don't want to be too sensitive in case your mother hears mm-hmm. this, but you had some oh, challenge sorry. with your mother, sorry. with your relationship with your mother, and so you have a very strong maternal guide. And I felt like it was someone that you have known. It could be the um, the R name that, and maybe she's bringing you a rose, and that's what Josie's oh. seeing. Um, so I'm oh, sorry to okay. interject, but that was okay. something I had written down that I wanted to. Um, share with you. Go ahead, Josie. Mm-hmm. I want to you. Okay. All right. Now, did that answer the question or do you want me to, is there anything you wanted to clarify? No, that, that'll, well, that's, that's great. Okay. And I believe you wrote in so, the, and Walt, you wrote in the, the chat room that you are moving. Is that right? Tony just told me the producer. Well, I, <laughs> I have, I have, I have, uh, I have moved, um, and um, I probably am planning to move next year. So, so April is, right is probably a good time to do so. Mm-hmm. Right there, Josie. Mm-hmm. Some validation Well, take it in mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, your dad, uh, let me just hold hold on for a second. Cause I'm, um, so, uh, is there, um, your dad has anything to do with October, the month of October? Is there a sister, yeah. there's a male spirit? M- October is my... Uh, 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 <laughs> October is my birth month, and my father okay. died in October. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your dad, your dad is yeah. here, and um, is there P or T in his name, or it's um, it relates to? Well, him? there's a T in his name. Okay, there's a T. I in just, his I, I just want to make sure that it's his actually an, an, an initial. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, an initial. Passed... No, no P or T. Okay. Uh, passed away from illness. There was something that was like a yes. disease that took him about three years from the beginning to the end. It was an acute oh, in the yes, last six did. months, and then he passed yes. from that illness. You also have a brother Correct. as well. I do. Okay, and younger then bro- younger brother. Younger brother, and then your brother's named after your dad. Is that correct? No, that's me. Okay, you named after him. That's good, because he's saying one I of am. the children. You know, one of the children is actually named after him, sharing the same name. That's good. Yes, that's um, correct. That's me. Your brother is missing him more than you do. I don't know the details of this, <laughs> but he makes okay. me feel like he's very much connected to your younger brother. He's just kind of in the stage of his life where he needs more like of a paternal love and support. So, your uh, your dad is actually just wants to kind of make that link with your younger brother as well. He's very happy for your mom. Okay. He feels like your mom is in a good place. She's very busy. She's yeah. taking care of yeah. things. She's happy. So that's good. He also have a sister who is living. Is that right? One I of do. His... My brother's okay. name starts, my brother's name starts with an R. I have okay. a younger sister Robert? as well. Yes. Is your brother okay. Robert? Yes, it's Robert. Okay, I heard Robert earlier. That's my brother. And is is your brother is Robert? Yeah, Robert. Four, four years younger than you, or just shy of four years younger than you? He's seven years younger. Oh, he's significantly You're close. younger. Oh, <laughs> not really, but <laughs> yeah. but okay. there's um, some. Uh-huh. Kind, but it's <laughs> but he's younger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go All ahead, right. Josie. The uh, there's also sorry. There's also a female. Uh, that's his sister who has like an anniversary just this year. Is that? There was a big event. I'm not sure it was actually his mom or the sister figure who had a, like a big anniversary. And a lot of people came over and gave her encouragement and balloons. She's an older woman. I'm not sure who he's talking about. Um, I'm not sure who that is. Okay. My sister had a birthday over the summer. She had a big, big birthday over the summer. Uh, okay. Who is this? The female? Is this a lady? Because he wants, he just wants to send his congratulations just for this one event or somebody. And the lady is older and weaker. I feel like he's actually in the wheelchair. 
right okay. now. Um, if it's related to my sister, she lives out of state, so I. No, I no, 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 no. Was. It's his his sister, oh. your dad's sister. Oh, my dad's sister. Oh, all my dad's relatives and sisters, and my dad had a brother, and that was it. Okay, I'm he not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure where he, this is going. There's somebody's anniversary. Okay. Somebody's like 70 years old. This is what he's showing to me. This is a big event that will be happening okay. either or okay. has just happened. Um, and it's a, someone's birthday who's a female. Now, okay. I'm not sure if you can maybe click with you right now. Maybe one of his relatives also. I feel like her name starts with an A okay. or an L. Um, um, okay. And... Okay. He just wants to be part of that celebration altogether. Hang on to it. Perhaps it'll it show up. Could be my later. aunt. Yeah, it okay. could be your aunt. And aunt on yeah. your mother's side or your father's side? My father's side. Oh, I think that's what. So maybe that Josie was saying um, your father's mm. sister. Is it your father's aunt? It's it's sister energy. Well, there's a sister-in-law. Oh. Yeah, it's my brother's my brother's uh, my father's brother's wife, his sister-in-law. Okay, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't know. There's an A and an L. If you have ant in it, there's an A and an L in it. They're both. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, I don't know why, but as I said, I don't choose specifically information that comes from the spirits and so on. Okay. Uh, this, that's great. what he, whatever he gives me is maybe there are other spirits on the other side in the, as a group. They kind of, I don't know the events of the upcoming year that relate to that person. Only they know. My job is to really okay. pass this information on to you and then, uh, and then just do my best in that in this specific work uh yeah and uh, get a dog <laughs> always good advice <laughs> get a dog yes he says get a not dog. A, not a bird or 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 a, or a fish or a cat a dog okay <laughs> yes get a dog Josie he says, and I, Josie and, and I you just are you, both you need a dog Virgo. so you don't feel lonely that's Josie, what and I, Josie and I both have birds, so uh, we, uh, we're companion. advocates of having okay. birds too. <laughs> like, okay, we yes. had one when we were when I was younger. So uh, there you go. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. You had a dog when you were younger. You're saying? My dad did. Your yeah. dad mm -hmm. did. Oh, okay. That's it was nice. a family. It was a family dog. It was a family dog. Uh, was he white and with some gray on him? He w he was. He was white. He was a was a Westie. Uh, I don't know what a West, that West is. West Island White Terrier. A West, it's like a little Scotty medium? dog. Oh, it's a, a short white guy. Scotty dog. But he had a big personality. Yeah, but he was. He, he had a personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. I, I, he's. He, I see him. He showed himself to me a little bit. He, and uh, what was oh, his name? Just so I, does guy. it start with a T? Did, he, uh, did well, you call him something with a T? It started with a B. It started with a B. Is bear. Bear. <laughs> it's called a bear. Um, B -A -R. So actually, I, I, he's he's with your dad right he now. Was, I see him was, with your dad. He yeah. was very yes, I'm sure he is. He was very close to my dad. And so um, they got along swimmingly. And Josie, I think part of the reason why uh, uh, Walt uh, was telling you to tell Walt to get a dog too is because it's a message about that about um, Bear because Bear is actually. Um, he works for you too. Bear is like a guide for you. So Bear, I'm just seeing Bear like run out because he showed himself to me, and I see him like running around and like, you know, when when you need help with something, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be late. This traffic is terrible. Bear runs out and he like gets angels and he's like gathering people, and I'm actually getting a little excited because he's got this excited energy about him, and he's like, you know, I just see him running around and kind of like barking and like saying, hey, come on, we're gonna help Walt out. So just so you know that w um, Bear is actually working hard for you too, and he calls in angels and guides and keeps an eye out for you. I see him guard dogging for you and just like uh, sitting by by your side and your dad's cracking up about it and he's like that's they, like it's so much fun Funny. for your dad to be able to have bear and then like also send him out to look out for you and robert and your sister so um just know that you, we've got all kinds of um help on and um uh, it's funny. My, my brother and I both say we have rock star parking karma, so he's oh. probably the one that helps us find parking spaces. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, that's what he was talking about, you driving in your car, and you were concerned about it. So, <laughs> yeah, Bear's yeah. looking out for you. <laughs> there it is. And your dad, of course. You know, well, your dad's awesome. sending Bear out. <laughs> it's so yeah, cute. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. It is. That's great. Well, so nice to connect with you, Walt. Well, thank you well, so much for you. calling in. Please do um, subscribe to to the channel. Subscribe to Josie's channels. And thank you again for for calling in. It was really fun and nice to meet you and your dad. <laughs> well, you guys. Well, thank you. Have a blessed holiday oh, and enjoy the well. rest. And mm -hmm. we'll enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. You too. You too, Walt. All thank the you. best. Yeah. All the best.
That's Trisha. Right. Yes. So I'd like to. I'd like. Can you answer me this? Can you answer this question about pets? Now, how did you get to? How was the first experience that you knew you you were a pet communicator, specifically with animals on the other side? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, a- after my awakening as an adult, right. uh, you know, that first time that I knew for sure. So the story is. Um, that the story that I was telling you about going to the psychic and then kind of being cracked open. So the first thing I learned about myself was that I was an empath. And then I um, started to take a course, an online course with a person about how to become a healthy empath. Again, along the lines of what you were saying that, you know, it's just a burden if you don't understand what's going on. And so that was the course that I was taking. And in our my very last session with this person, whose name, by the way, is Caroline Van Kamenad, and her, mm-hmm. her website is The Happy Sensitive. It's fantastic. Does wonderful work with empaths and highly sensitive people. So um, my last um, phone uh, Skype kind of session with Caroline, we were do we were going through and Caroline was saying there's a, there's something that you need to uncover in the session. It was like a session was going for an extra long time because she's like, no, there's something that we need to uncover. And so... Just I was doing a visualization and I visualized a little girl who I realized was actually was a version of me. And this little girl could speak with animals. It was just something that I said. And Caroline said, that's it. That's exactly that. That's it. And we had started the whole session with me talking about this situation I had with a feral cat, you know, that was in my in my um, in, who was homing in my backyard. I've been feeding her and had a relationship with her, even though she's feral and I couldn't handle her. And um, I was concerned about whether I should intervene to take care of her about something. And the something actually was that she was um, pregnant. And um, I didn't know if I was supposed to let her have them and try to trap the babies or if I was supposed to intervene and, you know, take her to the doctor to abort the babies. And Mm -hmm. so Caroline told me, just go and speak with Helen right now. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about because I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't know anything about this. And after the session, I just went and I sat down, took a breath and just reached out to Helen and said, "Um, what do you want to do? And I heard very clearly, like we do as mediums in my, you know, a voice or a texture of a voice in my mind's ear. I can't have these babies. I can't have these babies. And I, I was actually hoping that the answer would be that, oh, let me have the babies. You know what I mean? So I didn't have to do something that was more assertive and intervene. But um, she was telling me, I can't have these babies. I can't have these babies. So long story short, we did trap her. She trapped really fast. Took her to the hospital. It turned out that one of the babies was lodged inside her. There were three babies. One was lodged, and she was going to die. She wasn't going to be able to have those babies. Literally couldn't have those babies. And um, so that was my first experience where, uh, Josie, I'll just tell you, it's telepathy. And it really isn't that different than um, mediumship. But... um, and then with animals on the other side, it's it's just it's similar to the difference between speaking um, with if you if you're speaking with a ghost, you know, someone who hasn't passed over crossed over to the other side and feeling their presence mm-hmm. and then feeling the presence of someone who has crossed over and that higher vibration. Mm-hmm. That's the difference mm-hmm. between speaking with an animal in the body and an animal that's passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have another. Yeah, caller. I, 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 sure, I do. Uh, I do. See, see, you know, animals all the time, and then especially, you know, actually, once it was uh, working in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, mm-hmm. here in Canada, as a, as an expo, and there was a lot of farmers. So a lot of mm-hmm. farmers came along with their cows and, and stuff. So that was a really wild experience to be able to channel, yeah. <laughs> to channel all kinds of uh, creatures on the other side. So, but I, I never, I would never say for myself that I am the animal communicator. I'm just, as I said, I mean. And it's to me that's something you just feel strongly about. I just, right. you know, they they're there, but I'm just curious how that happened to you. Yeah, yeah. So is it someone things. someone else is on the line? Yes, and we have just a, we have a very short time. Um, okay. And but we yeah let's and we and now hello? career. Hello, you're you're on the air. Who's this? Oh hey. Hey. Who is oh this? hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your name? My name is Mar. Mar? Yeah. Beautiful. Hi, Mar. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from L.A. Oh, great. Oh, all kinds of L.A. today. Well, you know, we, we only have a couple of minutes before we mm-hmm. sign off. So what okay. can we do for you today, Mar? Um, I was just sort of intrigued. Um, a friend of mine, Tony, had posted that you guys were giving uh, free psychic readings. And um, I'm actually mostly concerned about 
just career and money right now. It's It's been a really rough year, and I'm just kind of sort of curious as to how to proceed with that. Okay. Josie, mm-hmm. would you like to lead or... Shall yeah, we have so like, if, it's, we have if, you, if you want, sure. Uh, Mar, so um, financially, it's uh, whatever I'm seeing, the line starts for you, and I'm just trying to make this really quick. 2015, right. 2015 is the year of your sort of the beginning of the financial journey for you. So 16 is it's not just something that's been happening this year alone. So you are working with a lot more sort of bigger time frame on your hands. So the way I can suggest to you to resolve the situation, that's from the spiritual source. You need to be, um, first of all, right now there's a lot of, fear that's related to finances and this is something that i just my spirit guys are saying it's not that that the money's not there and financially it's just for the last two years there have been so many things have been happening in your life and not just in finances it's also in your personal life as well so these two years have kind of put you in a place of fear and uncertainty where everything else is you sort of feel like you got to have to hold on to this so tight or it will just kind of disappear and then you'll have to chase it again so this is the most important thing you can do for yourself is to really heal that part of you which feels like you constantly need to struggle so once you get that healed everything is fine so everything will kind of work out so next year uh job wise I feel like you may have to do a little bit of the part-time job here and part-time here so just doing very different multiple projects and uh, it's almost like to me like three or four months contract I'm not I don't know what you do but in generally I can say that the jobs are out there you have to think instead of looking for one permanent position look for shorter a part-time contracts. I, I wish I could tell you it's going to be a lottery waiting. It's nothing <laughs> like this that I could pick up, and that, that's not the guidance they usually receive from the spirit guides when it comes to finances. <laughs> but the financially, uh, where I'm seeing right now, your energy is really blocked from your own fears. And once you release that, you will be able to see clearly. This is the, you will open up the whole new path for yourself the job I feel like you have to work for your money I feel like you you you're the one who actually paying the bills and so on and so forth they're saying to me do not move stay within the area where you are right now because you are in a good place when it comes to making financial kinds of decisions and so on I also feel that people actually pay you cash so I don't know how that works out with you either paying, you know, just people actually doing the job and then they pay you with a stack of money, which is like a cash, you know, uh, a permanent position. But for you, it helps you to get, uh, to stay afloat, to stay on course with with your life. I don't see you going broke or struggling with money uh, or in poverty and so on and so forth. I think once you will learn to really let go and release that, those fears in you, things will be a lot more confident. So it's just more about financial confidence than not. So, but what I've seen is basically look for jobs that will help you to uh, get a little bit more accumulated finances in the meantime. And then from there, you continue growth. There's also suggestion for them for you to go to school, to actually have an education. Now, education to me is not something you have to go to university. It's more like a six-month program. It's a kind of upgraded course on your skills that will help you to maybe upgrade your level of expertise in the same area where you are right now. Um, I don't feel like it's a full-time business. It's a full-time school. I feel it's more of a, like a night school where you will take this on the weekend or at night. But essentially, you will be able to to manage that and so on. I also feel like you are looking after one of the people in your family. It's just your, there's people in your family like your parents or someone who is dependent on you You for finances. Josie, Josie, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you are still there, um, Mom. We thought the call dropped. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, good, good. (laughs) Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We have just about, we have one minute left. 
And, okay. Um, but okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, Mar. Um, but thank you so much for calling in. And I just want to back up what Josie said when you first were asking your question that I did see a dark spot, like a sadness uh, around the finances because of the, the way you've been feeling. Generally, you know how to raise your vibration in all the other areas of your life. You have some great bright spots and just know that you can raise the vibration and, you know, bring up that that hope and, and that belief in the financial area by raising it in the other ways, the ways that it seems easier to. Does that make some sense to you? Mm. Yeah, just go about um, go vibrations about, like I'm sorry, like how like 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 um, the things like that make you happy, happy or? You're the things that make you happy. Oh, yeah, the different areas of your life where it's easy for you to connect with happiness and joy. Go ahead and do that, and that is going to um, that's going to help you to um, raise it in the the area of finances. Even though it seems like it's roundabout, it actually is going to work. We have five people still on hold, and I'm so sorry we're not going to be able to okay. to get to no, everyone else. No, that's okay. Oh, Mar, thank you so much okay. for calling in, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Mar. Thank, Thank you, Mar. Yeah. Right. Good luck. Good sure. luck, my Thank friend. You. Yeah. Best of luck. All right. And the All right. other folks that take care. Bye bye. Bless you. The other folks that called in, please do subscribe and please do call back next time. And um, if you call back next time, next Sunday, and just let us know in the chat room that you called this week, we will be sure to get you in right away. Josie, I want to thank you so much for your beautiful spirit, for your contribution today. So lovely to connect with you. And everyone, it's Josie, same. please tell everyone your social media, um, how they can find you. Or oh, uh, JosieGrouse.com. That's my website. You can just type Josie Grouse on YouTube. Usually my videos show up also as well. Uh, and any other way, uh, I would love to get uh, connected with you guys. So Thank you so much, Josie. So <laughs> beautiful to connect with you today. And thank you everyone who tuned in today for Charmed on Charmed Life. We'll be live with you again next Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific. And thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs>